Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to recap the week in real estate, which this week it was kind of a snoozer. Not a lot going on. Memorial Day was on Monday, so things were kind of slow. And as usual in the Phoenix area, when it starts to get up over 100 degrees, we hunker down. We eventually come out of our shell, but we kind of pull back a little bit and go, I'm not ready for this yet. And uh, this upcoming week is going to be one of those not fun weeks, although I did get a break and go up to Payson for a couple nights. It was real nice. But this morning when I was leaving, it was supposed to be over 90 up there. So, you know, that's it's OK if you just want to hang inside your RV with the air conditioning on. But let's take a look at some of the things that did happen this week. I ran into an interesting article that I wanted to touch on, and we're going to go over some of the market area data here in just a moment. But this one, see if you agree with this. More than half of homeowners don't shop for a mortgage, says Lending Tree. Despite the potential savings, more than half of all U.S. homeowners, 54% who took out a mortgage for their most recent home purchase, only uh, received only one loan offer. This indicates a sizable portion of borrowers do not shop around for the best mortgage deal. Now, kind of surprises me, kind of doesn't. Um, th there's a I don't want to call it a fear, but I see more and more that people are looking for a house. They, you know, you'll refer them to a mortgage broker. And they just kind of want to stay in their office and go online and look at one place and they decide they like the rate. I'm just going to take that and off I go. And by comparisons, people compare rates that they see online. And that can work out okay. Sometimes it could work out disastrously because they, they don't show not disaster. Let's not even use that word. They don't show the fees associated with it. My recommendation, and you know this on this show, is to use a mortgage broker. They shop the rates for you. You give them a call. You give them your information. They Now, they're not going to get it done in 15 minutes like you're going to find going uh, to Lending Tree <coughs> or going to Quicken. They're going to take your information. They're going to look at it. They're going to look at everything. They're going to look at your income, your debt to income ratio, your credit score. They want to look at how much you're considering putting down. All of those factors make a difference in what kind of loan they can come back with. And they can come back and go, well, found a few things. Found this one at this rate with this fees, this rate with this fee. And you have options. Well, 54% of you are saying, nope, I'm just going to go online. I'm just going to check and I'm going to grab whatever, whatever I want. I'm one person. I'm not shopping. I don't recommend that, folks. I think it's one of the biggest payments you're ever going to have in your life. You should shop around and you should shop around with help, not just online. I can't stress that enough. So, um, you know, give it a shot. Get a hold of a mortgage broker. If you don't know one, get a hold of me. I can refer you one. You know, I work closely with Pat at Price Mortgage. And uh, and that's why we call them Pat. What's my rate McMasters? Because people call and go, what's the rate today? He can't answer that. It all depends on you. So anyway, consider that next time you're out looking for a mortgage. So what went on in the mortgage market? There wasn't a whole lot of economic data coming out today, but there was some Fed speak that moved the market. Monthly PCA, PCE inflation gets bonds back into last week's range. And basically what they were saying was the rates went up because one of the Fed chairmen came out and said, you know, I really think we need to be closer to our target for a prolonged period of time before we raise rates. And the bond traders went, oh, great, we're going to be here a while. So the rates went up. And their vision of prolonged period of time is probably much different than ours. We look at anything past 60 days and go, wow, that was a long time. They're looking out months and months. So even though this number was better, it didn't light the world on fire. Now in this chart, when things go down, rates go up, things are, this is this is a 10-year yield. So I, I misspoke there. So they're trading in this range of about 4.50. The mortgage rates went up to about 7.26 this week and, uh, uh, and then just kind of leveled off. So not a lot of news, not much going on. Uh, I don't think there's any inflation data coming out this week and this week will be just as slow as usual. And when I look at Memorial Day numbers, you kind of have to, whenever you get the holiday in the Phoenix area, look at them, nod your head and just put them in the rearview mirror because they don't mean anything. We always slow down. New listings go down, sales go down. They spike right back up the next week. So we'll watch and see what happens. Same's going on with our inventory here. 16,200, 
24. You'll hear different numbers when people quote inventory. All depends on their source. But this is apples to apples. This is telling you that our new listings, not new listings, total listings for sale have flattened out. And I've kind of been expecting that. Will it hold? All depends. I think the historical perspective, unless if you get rid of this year, which is 2022, why do I get rid of that? Well, this was an anomaly. They went from interest rates of 3% to 7.5% right here. And the market just went into a shock. So now if we get some kind of shock, then yes, listings can either rise or fall. But as we see right now, apples to apples, I think it's going to be kind of flat, just like our sales. Now, that's not great for buyers. It's not great for sellers, but it's not bad for sellers either. And it's really not bad for buyers that are wanting to move right now today because we're seeing that uh, the bidding wars are for the most part gone. And this chart here that you see is for closings over list price are back down to 18% where it was 61% back in what I used to call the silly season. And most of the closings over list price are coming in in the three to 400,000 range, which there isn't a lot of, and 400 to 500,000 range. But they're only about $5,000 a pop. So people are just usually offering a little bit over list and then asking you, the seller, to give that back. So they can use that for closing costs or some type of rate buy down considerably lower than where it's been the past couple of years. Again, it's not dire straits for you sellers and it's not bad news for buyers either. Buyers are tired. I read an article this morning about, they called it the buyer revolt. I don't think it's buyer revolt. I just think buyers are like, I can't find the house. I can't afford the payment. What else am I going to do? I'm going to sit it out. People that can't afford the payment and do have the down payment and the means from selling another house to move, they're not holding back. They're going ahead and making the move. And uh, and they get to think about it. They get to look at a house and go, yeah, let me go home and think about this a little bit. Number of price changes per week. This is a little encouraging, too, in that it's dropped down to 2,236. Um, we did hit a big peak here again during 2022 when interest rates popped up. So everybody started putting their homes on the market, thinking they could get their asking price. They found out quickly they couldn't. So the price changes jumped up to 4,400. Today we're sitting at half that, 2,200. Price changes are not average sales prices coming down. It's the anticipation of what sellers thought they could get. Reality kicked in. They pulled their prices back. So make sure you understand the difference there. When you see a lot of price changes, it doesn't mean the wheels are falling off the wagon. And uh, I say that because there are still some articles out there from some of our favorite people. I'm going to pull one up here now. And this is our friend at Reventure Consulting. See if I can get this to blow up a little bit. And here it is. 100% surge in pre-foreclosures, not pre-foreclosures, delinquency rates. That was the big headline this week. And I watched uh, Dan Frio do a... Uh, video on this and look at the actual numbers and it's not there folks i mean i know it makes a great headline but a large percentage of a small number still a small number and this is week this week this is where we're at this is from march 2.6 percent last year 2.8 percent year over year change in delinquencies 0 0.2 percent that doesn't mean anything that doesn't mean that we have a problem so, and if you look at our market here in pre foreclosures here in Phoenix, take a look at this right down here. So far for the month of May, 43. So 43 homes are in pre foreclosure status. We have been down in the basement here forever. And usually what happens with pre foreclosure homes is an investor comes in and bails you out. So the banks are not getting very many homes back, even in foreclosures. Because the investors come in and go, hey, I'll, I'll take that off your hand before you hand it to the bank. Now you're not facing a foreclosure and it doesn't harm your credit. And uh, that's what I recommend. That's what, what I would do if you are if you have any equity at all to work with, then I would recommend trying to find an investor to come and take the home off your hand. So no doom and gloom this week, this upcoming week. I expect it to just be pretty ho-hum. And uh, do your best to stay out of the heat. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.